Hi, welcome to WFMR, a space to learn about WFM topics. Today I'll share how to create a software scheduling model. This is a 24-5 scheduling model, but before that, there is a disclaimer. Well, I did not find a single software model that truly works without some or even extensive work before delivering the resulting schedules. If you find any that was published before this video, please share the link in the comments. Let's get to it. I'll show you the model and next I will list everything that you need to make the model work. Number one, requirements. You need your requirements by interval, as we can see we have them on column G. Then you need your schedule agents by interval as in column H. These will tell us what uh, your schedules look like when graphed. Uh, if we look at now uh, the graph that we have, it is actually showing the requirement and then in blue and then the schedule agents in green, which currently is just zeros. All right, but we'll get to that. Number three you need your weekly schedules. This is how we have them in here. And as it's a five day model, we only have five days. Number four, you need to have a counter column, which is where you will tell your model how many agents you will have for each schedule. And this counter is on column X. Number five, I added a total cost column which will tell you how much you will spend on each schedule. Let's check the formula. This uh, total cost is here on column Y and then the formula all it does it multiplies the cost of the individual schedule by how many schedules you will have of this, right? So simple. Uh, then number six we need to have an interval map and uh, for that I will show this. Uh, what we have in here is simply uh, number one for every single 30 minute interval that matches the schedule that I input here on my scheduling map, the one I showed before. Number seven, interval by headcount map. What does this mean? Uh, what this will do is it will multiply every single interval by the time in here, by how many times you want that schedule in your model. So if we just look at the formula, right, it's taking every single interval where I find a number one based on the schedule I input in here, and then this is times the counter column. All right, so that's it. Now, number eight, we need something as our target. We need to know where do we wanna go with the solver model. And for this, I input some formulas on cells J19 and K19. What these formulas do is, well, I simply sum the total cost of what I will do with the model on column Y and then on column K I'm summing the total count of schedules that I get. All right, so this is it for the list of requirements. Then let's actually go and create the model and see if it works. The first model that we will do will get us the minimum uh, number of schedules. So we will ask the solver model to give us the least number of uh, schedules that will uh, comply with the requirements. For that, let's go to solver. Uh, first thing we need to do is set an objective, which will be K19, see, and then the next thing is we need the minimum number of schedules to comply with the requirements. Next, 
we will need to do this by changing here, this is it. So these are the variable cells. And then we will add some constraints, okay? What will my constraints be? Well, I need my schedules to reflect the requirements, right? So for this, I will uh, show something uh, that during my research uh, came up. Uh, all right, so I'm going to everything that is required and everything that is scheduled. So I want my schedules to be either equal or uh, they could be higher than the requirement. Let's just go with OK and then uh, let's solve this and see what happens. This is very important to build the model. You see we get uh, an error. The problem is too large for Solver to handle. Solver is limited to 200 variable cells and 100 constraints plus bounds on the variable cells. What this means is that we cannot do what I just did. We cannot uh, just uh, add the entire uh, requirement uh, by interval and make it work this way. Uh, there are some solver, uh, I guess, like uh, add-ins that are uh, for sale that may allow you to do that kind of thing. Uh, but this is not uh, what we're going to do to make it work. Uh, I'll just uh, change it. And what I will do is um, I'm going to grab my Monday because my Monday is uh, basically the highest day that uh, my requirements need. And well, this is possible because this is a five day uh, model. Uh, for 24 seven models, it, it, it could be a, a lot more difficult. Oh, I made uh, actually a mistake. I'm grabbing requirements, not schedules, but that's not uh, so much of a problem. So what we'll do is if we comply with Monday, then we're going to be able to comply with the rest of the days. The trick here is if your highest day is uh, Wednesday, then uh, you should uh, grab Wednesday, okay? Uh, one last thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, the numbers that I get in the schedules make sense. Uh, so, we know that we can only ask an agent to work one day and not uh, more than that or even may not, may, may not make sense to ask them to work less. So I'll add a last constraint and I'll do this. I'll ask that the results on this are always whole numbers, right? And by doing that, I'll make sure that I only get uh, full agents. Now let's go and solve and see if it works. Okay, so it's thinking. Okay, it says Solver found a solution. Okay, so 150 agents. Now, you may be thinking, well, yeah, but I have a lot of time in here that agents will not be doing nothing, right? That is true. However, look at uh, the pics, right? It is really getting you results that are very close to your pics in requirements. Uh, now, maybe, something that you're thinking now, well, yeah, but I actually don't have 150 agents. I actually have less than that. Can I still use this model to give me any good results? Let's give it a try. So for that, we're going to do a second model. We're going to also use the same uh, number of schedules, but this time we're gonna tell uh, Solver to get me uh, the schedules that I would need if I were to have, for example, 
let's say 125 agents. So we do that and we keep everything else the same. Okay, let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, it does say Solver could not find a feasible solution, but let's, but we actually see some schedules. So let's actually go and see uh, what happened here. All right, so it's giving us some schedules. However, it will give us this warning because it's not really complying with uh, every single interval. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that the schedules are all that bad. It's just that you would need to really decide if you have this headcount, uh, what's best for you. And yeah, it, I absolutely see that it, you might want to have, if you are going to have any trouble uh, it might be better to have it in the afternoon that maybe the demand is uh, less than in the morning because the morning could uh, actually cause more harm towards the intervals where you have the most volume. I completely see that. Uh, so maybe after using this uh, model the way we just did, uh, some work is still actually required. Nevertheless, I still think these are decent schedules to start working with. Uh, and then maybe just uh, doing some manual adjustments to make it better because definitely you may encounter situations where you cannot have everything perfect.